Hi, I am Rashawn Ali, one of the co-hosts of Sister Circle Live, founder of Sporty Girls Incorporated, and the creator of the Cool Sore Podcast. And you are watching The Atlanta Voice. Hey guys, it's Janae Hunter here with The Atlanta Voice, and I am so excited to be sitting here with none other than Miss Rashawn Ali. How are you today? I am very well. How are you? I'm well. It's a great Friday. The weather's great. Yes. We're moving out of this cold storm, I hope. I hope. I hope because this weather has been very inconsistent. I'm a yeah. summer baby. Yeah. I'm a warm like person. Mm -hmm. I love the vitamin D that comes from the sun to my face. Yes. Um, but I, I need it. I need the consistency. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we're on the right trend. I hope so. Mm -hmm. I hope so. I'm just so excited to sit down with you today. Oh, I just you. feel like we're just soul sisters. I don't know. Yeah. We are. I want to right. adopt you after this, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get that paperwork started. Hilarious. Yes. One thing I really want to start with was your tagline, I do media differently. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. So when creating, <laughs> look, I'm doing my research. <laughs> so when creating that tagline, like what, what did that mean to you? Well, I think that people have, when they think of media, they think of this um, preconceived notion of what a media personality is supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to make sure they enunciate right. and do all of these things and make sure they're very articulate yes. and intelligent. But I do media differently, and I think because of my upbringing, raised in, um, born in Atlanta, raised in Decatur, um, there's a side of me that is okay. <laughs> just super ridiculously cool. Okay. And I think I, I, I attribute that not only to my upbringing from amazing parents and down-to-earth parents, but my friends, my environment, and all of that. And I think that is what makes me different. And even on my, and I'm sure we'll get to Sister Circle, but even on my show, um, our show, Sister Circle, you know, we're not all these um, uh, uh, degreed journalists that are talking about politics and all of these things like that. We're just four black women mm -hmm. who are from different walks of life. And I'm sure people look at our show and they love it. And some that are like, oh my God, they're not, I mean, how could she say that? Right. And those things, they're gonna have people, the people are gonna have opinions. Mm -hmm. But the way that I do media is the way I want to see media. Yes. Just be who you are, yeah. girl. If there is something inside of you that wants to turn up when you hear juvenile, oh. then that's okay. But then you can de deliver a story mm -hmm. about what's going on with President Trump and DACA. You know what I mean? Right. Be able to be diverse. And I think that's the beauty of doing media differently. And mm -hmm. that is how I present. And because of my background in radio, you know, I've had the opportunity to... To, to chop it up with a Waka Flocka. Right. And also Michelle Obama and make both of those interviews be relatable to who they need to be relatable to. Right. That's a gift and I thank God for that gift. Yeah, I thank God for <laughs> putting that gift in you and showing others like me that it's okay, it's okay. To, to know the rap songs but to know current news mm -hmm. and deliver. Yes. Yes, yes absolutely. <laughs> I'm feeling that. <laughs> and so we did want to get to your show, Sister Circle, but I want to talk more so about just your journey through media because you started, you know, in radio and now we see you, you know, as a daytime talk yeah, show host. So yeah. just what was that, how has that transition oh, been? Anybody who's watching this interview, especially young people, and, and yourself yeah. as well, and you're doing an amazing job Thank right you. now. Um, but the work that you put in uh, really prepares you for where you're going to be. Um, radio, I love radio. The art of radio, being able to be quick on your feet, mm -hmm get the interviews with the people that I mentioned and everybody in between right. um, and give you the true foundation that you that you need. And that, that is exactly what I need. That's what my journey needed for me to be the, the best that I can be now. Mm -hmm. And radio just taught me those things. It taught me so much. It taught me how to fail. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. taught me how to be fired and get back and, right. and, and get back into a, you know another situation. Um, but it taught me mostly how to be resilient. Mm -hmm. I feel like I can do anything mm -hmm. because of my experience with radio. Wow. It, 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 it gave me my greatest joys and my most difficult heartbreaks mm -hmm. and everything in between. And um, I'm here sitting up in this little cute Nat Taylor dress okay. <laughs> because of the things that I've been through in radio. Because had I not come full circle or been able to rebound from those heartbreaks, I wouldn't be here today. It made me the woman I am, so I'm always indebted to radio. 
Working on a talk show, mm -hmm. and you work with three other women yeah. as well. Yeah. So how has that been? What do you think is like one of your, your favorite parts about that? It's funny because we just had a, a press junket earlier this week. Um, it has made me a better leader. Mm -hmm. When you are considered the moderator of the show, and I am the moderator of the show, um, you know, people can take that and really run with it. I'm the moderator of the show. Mm -hmm. That's not who God created me to be um, in that light. God created me to be someone who, yeah, he's given me this gift to be able to do that right. particular assignment, but he also gave me the gift to be able to know how to navigate mm -hmm. and know how to, Selena, what do you think about that? And Ms. Quiet, how you doing today? And make sure that everybody, nobody ever feels like she talks the most, then that's quote unquote, you know, she's the whatever of this. Right. Mm -mm, that's not, I don't roll like that. I wasn't raised like that and I don't roll like that. So it has taught me how to, although I've been on an ensemble cast in radio, uh -huh. being with four, three other women mm -hmm. is different. Oh, yeah. I was with men being a moderator. Um, so it's just really taught me how to be a better leader and knowing how to tap into the greatest part of each and every person on our show. Mm -hmm. I know what makes Selena um, feel good. Mm -hmm. I know what'll get quiet, riled up to give the best sound bite ever. Mm -hmm. I know how to alley-oop to Kiana to, to, to come in with a punchline. Right. And that's why I'm in this position. So I've learned how to be a better leader and I'm, and, and I'm more, um, and even a better friend. Cause you know, you have your set you have your set friends. You're like, no new friends, like Drake, right? <laughs> but I've gained three new friends, which is a great thing. And so what you see is truly what you get on our show. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no, none of this, and none, none of them chicks real. Right. All of us are real. Selena from Chicago, hey. Kwa from Memphis, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Kiana is from the Midwest by way of Atlanta. So what you see is what you get. So I've learned how to be a better leader, yeah. And it's great that you mentioned that you got you gained friends, especially being older, because I think, you know, we think growing up that the friends I had in third grade, um, yes, and I still have a few. And then you think the people that you started like in college with, you know, we're going to go and those going to be my bridesmaids and, you know, and the concept of making friends, yeah. you know, as you get older, it seems so like, no, yeah. but it's actually <laughs> more embracing. It that. is. I think that people have to understand that as you grow as a woman, mm -hmm. um, so to do your needs as a woman, yes. so that that friend from third grade may, now may not be able to relate to who you are. I'm 42, about to be 43 in June, um, so, you know, I still have some friends from, from elementary school, but... I can call Selena and be like, girl, let yeah. me tell you what happened. <laughs> and now I have a friend in her, right. you know? So um, it's it's all about growth. Mm -hmm. It's all about growth. growth yeah. About yeah. Yes. yeah. And I hear that that cancer coming out of you, that summer baby, you know, a little bit of nurturing and yes. all of that. What makes them feel good, <laughs> yes. okay? We, we know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We see you as a, a journalist. We see you as a talk show host, but you're also a mother and you're also a wife. So how do you balance all of that. Um, I didn't get it, I didn't get the job well done early on in my career because I was so focused on building the Rashawn Ali brand that my husband would say, you know, you give the world Rashawn Ali and I can't even get Rashawn when you come home. That was prior to us even having children. So um, we, now we have an 11 year old and an eight year old. So I had to really reel that thing in. Right before he never said he would leave or anything like that. But in, in my soul, in retrospect, like I would have left me and that's gonna right. be the name of my book, just teaching women how to balance it all. Right. I would have left me because I was so engulfed in the light. I was in the club on Friday nights and I knew I was bringing money into the house. So that was my excuse. Well, I'm bringing money into the house. Right. What's up? <laughs> you know, but all he wanted was time. Right. So now I understand that you can't take none of this with you. You can't take anything with you, but all you have is, are those times and those precious moments. Mm -hmm. So why would I continue to squander that away? So I had right. to learn how to balance. It was right. a work in progress. And even now, I'm, I'm very quick to say no when I didn't used to say no in the past. 
I will say no and it's okay because mm -hmm. because of all of the work and all of the service that I've given I still serve right obviously that's part of who, who I am but I say no a lot and I don't if it hurts someone's feelings it's okay because I've lifted and mended hearts prior to your right. hurt feelings but my husband and my two children are, and outside of God and my spirituality, are most important to me. Right. And I have to make sure that I'm de I am um, helping to cultivate and develop strong black women. Yes. And I have two black girls who are looking up to me, who are seeking guidance. Mm -hmm. And I hope that I can give them what they need. Um, even in those mistakes, I'm not afraid to apologize to my children when mm -hmm. I know I've wronged, because you know, you know, our parents don't really, you know, our parents didn't apologize, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but I'm okay with apologizing because I want them to make sure that they know that I can make, am human and can make mistakes, mm -hmm. but also that I'm vulnerable. Mm. So it's so funny because it'll, it'll be a song on the radio and they're like, mommy, please don't cry. Please don't cry this gospel record, especially my little bit girl. She's like, mommy, don't cry. That Smokey Norfolk, don't cry. <laughs> So, no, gospel yeah. music is cool. Yeah. It's cool. 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 It's cool competitive swimmer. My daddy taught me how to swim mm -hmm. when I was three and I started swimming competitively when I was five years old. No girls in the water. Mm -hmm. We're just, you know, swimming, especially no black girls. And um, swimming was the, the vehicle that took me to college. I went to FAMU on a full swimming scholarship and ac had academic and journalism money as well, mm -hmm. but it, it, it gave me the opportunity to go to college. And not only that, from the physical aspect, but being a team player. And then I met three other young girls and we broke records. We, all four of us, we were like the only black girls in the water, but all four of us went to college on swimming scholarships. Mm -hmm. So two of us went to FAMU, one went to Howard, and one went to Georgia Southern. We just recently lost one to cervical cancer um, in this past November. But these young ladies were hostesses and bridesmaids in my wedding wow. when I got married in 2002. So I wanted to establish a nonprofit that, that focused on sports that would be deemed non-traditional in our community. Mm -hmm. Swimming, soccer, tennis, golf, and lacrosse. Because when black girls do anything, mm -hmm. we do it well. Okay. It's just that we stop right around 14, 15, especially now with social media and all these other things. Um, we stop before we can get that college scholarship. So that's why I established Sporty Girls in the beginning. And uh, now we've been able to serve over a thousand girls in the metro Atlanta area. We just had a huge event where a hundred girls came out for a big field day mm -hmm. and really learned the fundamentals of these particular sports outside. You just never know that the next lacrosse star right. could have been, you know, introduced to that sport at my event. Right. And because she was exposed to it, now she's playing lacrosse internationally. That's our hope. That's our goal for mm -hmm. these girls. So. That is why I started Sporty Girls, and now we have a, a collegiate um, student athlete at Grambling State University on a soccer scholarship. And we've got girls who've been through our program who not are not necessarily doing sports in college, but they become academic superstars. Mm -hmm. Princeton, Howard, Hampton, um, Florida a &M University, Georgia State University, um, Morgan State University, Savannah State University, and everything in between. But they've been through our programs, but because they were an athlete, they are better woman because athletics and sport teaches you so much outside of just the physical sport mm -hmm. so that and then the cool sore podcast which I started I'm a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated but we have so many women who are in sororities across the board all four mm -hmm. that are doing great things so I do cool sorors cool bra and now I've opened up to cool people what I wanted to do was focus on a niche market mm -hmm. and then people were like oh there's something for us and then I had a whole bunch of other people in other organizations like, so is it just AKs? I'm like, no, girl, I got this dope Delta on. And this, I got two Zetas on this week. Right. You know, I got Sigma Gamma Rho, I got everybody. Megas, Kappas, Iotas, like everybody. Mm -hmm. um, alphas doing their thing, Sigmas. And um, so I, I started with that. And now almost 600,000 downloads later. Wow. I think I made the right decision with that. I think so too. Yeah. yeah. So now I have cool people because it's not just people in Greek letter organizations mm -hmm. are doing amazing things. I just wanted to start off with a focused market and now it's blown up and I'm very grateful to God for giving me that vision mm -hmm. because it's blown up, it's doing, it's doing very well. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. When he gives you that vision, you cannot ignore it. You have to be obedient to the call. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yes.
Yes. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time out to really, you know, sit with us today and just have some great conversation. Yes. yes. You did a fantastic job. Stop. Thank yeah. you so much. You did your thing. <laughs> hey. You did your thing, sis. <laughs>